I got a number of people asking me about how to set up responsive images on their site, and for the most part, they're asking about the picture element. Uh, the thing is, to do responsive images, you don't actually need the picture element. There's two different things we can use. There is the picture element itself, but there's also the source set attribute. The source set attribute is a little bit easier to understand, and it can also be included inside of the picture element. So for that reason, I'm going to be breaking this up into uh, two different videos, uh, and it's going to sort of kick off a little bit of a mini images on the web uh, mini series or a little series here on YouTube, uh, with this one focusing on source set, which is probably most of what you actually need to serve up some nice responsive images. So what we're going to be doing in this video is looking at what source set even is, how we can use it on our sites, and why it's probably all you really need most of the time when you're writing your markup. Hi, my name is Kevin, and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it. Uh, and as I said, this week's video is focusing on the source set attribute for our image tags. So setting up images for our websites is a really important thing that I think a lot of people just take for granted. And uh, there's some really cool things we can do to make sure that people are getting the images they need. Uh, and with the source set attribute, we can do things like save bandwidth and just make sure that people are getting a nice high res image when they need it. Um, so the way it works is you can actually serve up images in two different ways. The first one is on the pixel density of the device uh, that is being used. So if somebody's on a retina display or on like a even higher res now that we have, um, like a 2x or 3x display, we can ensure that the image they're getting is uh, going to change depending on that. So if they're on a really high uh, pixel density device, it's going to give them a nice high res image. If they're on a just regular computer screen, 72 DPI, they don't need to load in that big heavy image, they can get a lower quality one and it's going to look just fine on their computer. The other way we can uh, have it decide which image to use instead of just on the pixel density is based on the width of the viewport. So at uh, different viewport widths, it could be on your desktop computer, uh, somebody loads it in nice and big, and another user's bringing it in smaller or they're on a tablet. Um, and because your picture is small or your picture may be bigger, it can load in different versions of the same image. So they're always getting a high quality image, but without using more bandwidth than they have to be using. So this can really help speed up your site, especially on smaller devices, so that's always a win. And it also has the benefit of always making sure people are getting high quality images when they need them so nothing looks blurry or weird on their computer. So it might sound kind of complicated and weird, so we're going to tackle and look a little bit at what all of this even means and the whole idea of resolution and pixel density ratios and all of that uh, before we really jump into the source set attribute. Uh, but luckily source set makes all of this really easy to do, so let's jump in there and check it out. So before we actually get into the code, I do want to give a quick example of why all of this matters, and I think it's a little bit easier to visualize in Photoshop. I have a small image here on my screen, and it looks fine. But the thing is, if we zoom in on this a little bit, we can start seeing it's getting a little bit blurry around the edges. And this is exactly what happens when I open this image on a 3x or a 2x device. So on a 2x device, this is what it would look like. And on a 3x, this is what it would look like where my edges are getting blurry. And to show you a bit of an idea of what's actually happening, I've put this one little blue dot on here. So all of these little squares are the pixels in my circle, and we have this blue dot that's right there. And what happens is when this ends up on a 2x device, it's taking that and it's actually making it a 4x4. So it's taking a single pixel and it's stretching it out to be a 4x4. And if you're on a 3x device, it's taking that single pixel of information and it's stretching it to be 3x3. Three three. So the problem with this is as the as these pixels get stretched out, they get blurrier and blurrier. So to really see what's happening. Um, I'm going to zoom to 100% because that's what it would normally look like. So here we have this at 100%. Um, and then I can just to show you, uh, I'm going to go up to 300% and push OK. And it makes this really blurry edge. Because if I zoom in now, you can see there's more pixels, or the pixels look smaller uh, with how this is sort of doing it. Um, so there's more information here, but it had to create that information itself and it leads to these really blurry edges. And this is exactly the problem that can happen if you're using uh, lower quality images uh, on a high res device. Um, the other time it will matter is 
just to lower the bandwidth that you are loading in. So you might have a nice big image because you need it to be a nice big image on a big screen, but then maybe my browser window's only this big. Do I need to load that? Say I'm on a laptop and I'm using a mobile connection, I might not want to do that. Or on a tablet, I don't need this really big image loading in. I can load a smaller version of that image in and save uh, bandwidth along the way and that can be really useful as well as you can see here the difference in file size so even though my images are um, doubling in size I'm going from like a 1x I doubled the size to get to a thousand pixels by a thousand um, it's not actually doubling it's going from 256 to almost a meg and then it's going from one meg to two megs here so from 1x to 2x it's almost four times bigger and then I'm going from there to there I'm doubling it uh, again, so it's creating a pretty massive difference in file size. Um, so if bandwidth is an issue and you don't want people loading in images that they that are too big and they don't need at all, this can be one really good way to f that um, can handle it. Um, so one thing you'll notice here, I am in VS Code, and if you follow me uh, regularly, you'll know that usually I'm in CodePen. So I'm going to be using images in this. It's a little bit easier to have it on my computer than CodePen, uh, even though I can do it there. Um, and there was also a comment a little while ago from someone suggesting I use my uh, text editor instead of CodePen. So for this, it's easier. I'm still going to show the code. So if you want the code from this, there will be a link down below. Um, but I want to know what you think and what you prefer. So there should be a little card popping up in the top of the screen right now. So if you click on that, you can vote whether you like seeing or you like it when I use um, CodePen because it's easy to share and play with the code that I've created. Or if you'd prefer that I'm coming into VS Code and writing my code in here. Never done a poll like this before, so I don't know how I see the results, but uh, I'm curious to know what your thoughts on it. You can also leave a comment down below. Um, that could be useful too, but the poll would be more useful for that because I think it'd be easier for me to keep track. All right, so we want to set up our image. So before we do anything else, let's actually just come in here and set up a regular image. Um, <clears throat> so we have our image with our source tag and our alt text. So source, we all know how that works. So I have some images already set up. So I'm going to go to an images folder. And you can see I have my cat image here. And I'm going to hit save. And there's my cat. Um, and just to show really fast, I've set a width of 100%. Actually, let's turn that off just for a second. Um, so there's my cat at 100%, and you can see there's 1x on there because this is my 1x version of my image. This is the smallest uh, version of it at 500 pixels wide. A little grumpy, angry looking cat. Um, so we all know the image source is, well, where, where's the source of that image? And where can we find uh, the image that we're going to be dealing with? Source set... Um, does. Uh, let's start by looking at the technical description. The MDN describes it as a list of one or more strings separated by commas indicating a set of possible image sources for the user agent to use. So right now we have one source in here and the, the most important thing of what I just read was that it's we're indicating a set of possible image sources. So right now we only have one image source and what source set lets us do is actually put in multiple image sources. Um, so what we can do now is you can do all this, like I can do my SRC set. Um, this can all go in one line, but just to make it a bit easier to read on the screen, I'm actually gonna uh, move things around just like this a little bit and you'll see why uh, in a second. It's gonna be a little bit easier to follow along. This is HTML, so empty space really doesn't matter or get in the way of anything, and it'll make it a little bit more readable. Um, so what I can do here is I can actually put all the different versions of my image that I have, .jpg, and they're comma separated. IMG cat 1000.jpg, uh, comma IMG cat 1500. JPEG and I'm going to save that and actually I was talking about readability so let's put each one of these on a new line and we'll move all of them over oops there we go uh, just to make it as easy to read as possible now the thing is I've told it I have three images to use um, but the thing is right now if I go and look well it's always the same image no matter what I do so I've told it there's three different images I can use, but it's not actually changing the current image that it's using. Um, I've also kept the source here, and this is a bit important uh, because not all browsers support it. Br browser support is actually pretty good right now for, it's uh, close to 90%, but 
Internet Explorer like uh, you'd expect, plus a few others aren't supporting it. So if it doesn't work, we can fall back to the original source. And if it does work, it's going to start using these ones if it recognizes the source set. Um, the other thing that's good about that, or the other thing with that is you probably just want to put the lowest quality image here just um, to stick with keeping it low and easy on the bandwidth for, you know, it's probably an old computer and not the best devices they're on. So you might as well just go with the lowest quality one. So uh, we need to give it more information to know which one we actually, which one it's going to use. So we can either give it two different pieces of information. We can tell it what the actual width of the image is. So I could tell it the width is 500 pixels, or I could tell it what the uh, device pixel ratio is that I want to be using. So I'm going to start by looking at based on the resolution, so based on the pixel ratio that I want. Um, just because I think it's a little bit easier to start with and it sort of falls into what we're going to be doing after with the widths. So just really quick on, uh, you've probably heard that there's like 1x, 2x, 3x devices, things like that. Resolution on the web is a little strange. We're used to working with pixels, but a pixel on one device is not equal to a pixel on another device. That's because we're using CSS pixels. So when I, I put something like say you do width is equal to 1500 pixels, um, this isn't really 1500 pixels. It's a little bit different what we're, um, how that pixel is actually working. It's a CSS pixel. Traditionally, one CSS pixel was just one pixel and it's one dot of light on a screen. So that one dot of light on your screen, that's a hardware pixel each little dot of light on the screen, that's each little, little dot that we can't see because they're too small, each one of those is a hardware pixel. So it used to be that all devices had a, one CSS pixel was one uh, hardware pixel. But then Apple created retina displays and it rendered each single CSS pixel as four dots. So going back to here, that's where that little blue dot that I had, um, it was taking something that was one little, little, little dot and it was bringing it from, you know, this is what we were giving it, and it was rendering it as a 4x4 square. So this is a 2x device, and newer devices are up to 3x, and I think they've gone higher than that, uh, where, you know, that's the 3x is when it becomes the 9x9. Nine nine. And this is the hardware pixel. So the CSS pixel is 1x1, one one, but that could render anywhere from being something small like this to as big as that, even though you said it's one pixel across. Um, and this is an important thing to understand. So this is the whole retina display is 2x. There's other things I said are 3x now. So what we want to do is we want to tell it which one to use. So the first one, you don't have to tell it that it's 1x. It's just going to assume that. But I can come up onto here and say this is for a 2x device. And I can say this is for a 3x device. So I want my image here. Let's just even give this the width of 500 pixels. So I'm telling it my image has to be 500 pixels wide. but depending on the device it's going to get, I want it to actually use a thousand pixel version of the image or a 1500 pixel version of the image. And it's going to shrink that picture into the 500 pixels because that's how big I told it to be. And by shrinking it down, it's going to give it the exact quality that we want because it's taking 1500, smushing it down into a 500 pixel space. Um, and we can actually simulate that in your dev tool. So I'm going to go to my inspect here. Uh, I'm going to click here, which is in Firefox to get the responsive mode. If you're in Chrome, you have this and it's right next to it. It looks, the icon's identical, but it's just over here. So I'm gonna click on that and that opens up this responsive mode. Um, and when you're in the responsive mode here, you can come and drag and change the, the screen size and all of that. Um, and one thing you can also do is the density pixel ratio, I think is a DPR. Uh, if you're in Chrome, where my little X here is, there'll be three little dots. You might not see this. There's like a little pop-out menu you can get and you'll see um, a pixel, density uh, checkbox you can put on and then all of a sudden this appears here. So I can go up to uh, DPR of 2 uh, or I can bring this up to a DPR of 3. So when my page reloads you can see it's reloading that with the 3x because I told it that on a 3x device I want to use this version of my image. Or if I go to a 2x device I want it to use my 2x version of my image. So in my 500 I've put that in uh, 1x in the you know to, just to make it so we can easily see what's actually happening here. So if your image is always staying the same size, you have a set width on it, and it's always staying that size, this is a nice easy way that you can go about um, changing the version of the image that's being used depending on the uh, pixel ratio of the device that, you're, that the, the user is using. Um, but there is another way to go about doing this, and 
to me this is a bit more of a practical one so we're gonna see what that one is now so let's save that um, and we're gonna drop that back down to one actually let's close our responsive mode um, so I'm going to take this 2x out of here and I'm going to take this 3x out of here and hit save so we go back to normal. We're on my 1x image and this 1x image is set just to match the size of my screen. Now one thing that's going to happen is when my screen gets big you can probably see the quality of the image is dropping. That's because I have a small picture and I'm making it bigger and bigger and bigger so I'm losing quality on that image. It's starting to get a little bit blurry and if you had a smaller or especially you'll see it a lot on the text right here the edges on my text are starting to get really really blurry. And that's not a good thing. We don't want that to happen. So another way we can do it, because here it's my device is actually staying the same resolution. It's the size of the picture that's changing. So what I can actually do is, um, instead of using the 2x and the 3x, is I can come in here and write the size of the image. So I do that by putting a 500w, a 1000w, and that's because not because it has nothing to do with this number. It has to do with the size of the image. I just put this in here so it's easier for me to remember. Um, but this is the actual pixel width of my image. And you'll notice it's not pixels, it's 500W for width. It's a little bit different than something you might have seen, but it has to be the W like that. So I'm going to save that. And oh, do you see that? It's 2x and the image got more clear. Let's go and undo these for a second. And I'm going to save. So you see my image is not looking bad, but especially if you look at the numbers here, it's a little bit blurry. And I'm going to put these back on. Let's pay a lot of attention here when I save. And you can see the numbers are nice and crisp. And we'll do that one more time. And you can look at maybe the cat's fur um, just makes a big difference when I save that and it jumps up to the 2x. And now when I change the size of this, you're gonna see I'm gonna get to a point, oh, now it's jumped up to the 3x because it's going, my browser window is bigger than this, so I'm gonna use this image. Um, and then it's gonna drop back down because it doesn't need the big version anymore. And then eventually it will drop back down to the 1x as well. Uh, in Chrome, I noticed it doesn't jump back down. So even if it's on, if once the 3x is loaded, it's not going to go back to the 2x and back to the 1x. And the idea there is it's cached in the system anyway. It's already in my browser's cache. So why should it? Uh, it has a high-res version of the image, so it's just going to keep using the high-res version. It's not actually going to has doesn't have to download anything new because that image already exists in there. So if you're trying this out with Chrome and you go big and it gets a 3x and then it's always staying at 3x, that would be the reason why. Um, if you want to prevent that from happening because you're testing stuff, in any of your, uh, or in Chrome or in Firefox, if you go to the network in the dev tools, there's a disable cache uh, that you can turn on and then as long as that's opened, it will uh, disable your catch, you can refresh, and then uh, you should be good to go. And the reason it needs this width here and uh, is because it doesn't know the size of this image before uh, the image loads. So normally when a browser loads in an image, unless you explicitly state the width and the height of that image, it needs to load that image before it knows how big it is. So the image has to load in, then it knows how big it is. So part of this, the whole idea here is that it's loading the right image and only the right image. We don't want to load all of them and then pick which one to use. We want it only to load the best one that it, it for the circumstances that it's in based on resolution and based on screen size. So we need to tell it the actual full width of the image that we're loading in before that image is loaded. And that's why we have this 1,000, 1,500, and 500 there, or whatever the actual size of your image is. Now, a really nice thing with using width rather than the 1x, 2x, 3x thing, it makes it a lot easier to use. Um, and just to show you what I mean, uh, here I'm sitting at my 2x. Now let's shrink this down so it drops to my 1x. And let's do a little inspect on here. Uh, with my responsive mode and whoop, my responsive mode is too big so let's shrink her down uh, so there we go it's at a 1x version of my image but if I actually switch this over to um, you see this is actually changing over to my 2x or if I go to my pixel density 3 and my screen gets big enough it's gonna switch over to the 3x so what this is doing, and if we get small enough, it'll go to the 1x. So I'm not saying at a 3x device, use this picture or use that one. What the browser is doing is it's doing a bit of math on the fly. So uh, it's looking and going, okay, I have a 500 pixel image on a device that's, say it's 360 across. Uh, can I get there? I can type it in, I guess. Uh, so I have it on a device that's 360 pixels across. 
it does a bit of math for us. It goes, okay, it's 500 pixels. I'm going to divide that by 360, and that gives me the number 1.38888. Well, no, I'm on a 3x device, so I can't use that one. It's too small. So let's try the next one. I have a picture that's 1,000 wide. I'm going to divide that by 360, and that gives me 2.777. Well, that's it's getting closer, but it's still too low. But hey, look, I have another image. It's going to do the math on this one. Turns out that one's way over three, so it's going to use that. Just to show if I drop down to two, the 2x image is loading in. Again, it's 1,000 divided by 360, 2.7777. Perfect. That's above my 2x threshold, so that is the image that I'm going to load in. So you don't have to use the 2x or 3x. This makes it so it's just going to choose the best possible image it can based on resolution and the size of the image. So with the width of your image, you don't really have to worry about what device it's being served on. It's just going to make that right decision for you anyway. There are times maybe the density makes more sense where you want to put your 2x, 3x, and to me that'd be like a logo or something where the image size is never changing. You have a set image, it's probably not something too big, um, and that it's just always that size on all devices. The rest of the time, I think this is the way to go, and you know you could just always do it this way anyway, and it would give you the best results. So I find this is the easier of the approaches. The only problem is you actually have to know the pixel width of your images to get it to work, whereas the 2x, 3x, it doesn't matter how big your images are, it's just going to use it based on the pixel density of that image. Now, one very important thing to take into account when you're using the image width is when we're setting like the 500 width here, um, and when I'm changing the size of this, right now my image is the size of my browser, um, but if I come into my styles here and I actually put this at 50% and I save it, um, you'll notice it's still at 2x even though my image is kind of tiny and it's going to switch over to 3x when I get to about here. Um, so the way this is actually calculated is it's assuming that your image's width is 100 VW or 100 viewport width. So it's, it's assuming that your image matches the, si the width of your browser or whatever device you're on. It's, it's matching the width of the viewport for the website. So it's looking at the size of this image. It's going, oh, okay, uh, my, well, let's just shrink this down actually. Um, so right now it's going, oh, my viewport is less than 500 and I have an image that's 500, so I can use that one. Then when I get about to here, it's going, oh, I've gone over 500 pixels from my viewport. Now I'm going to, this the this one is too small because my viewport is bigger than 500, so I'm going to jump up to the next one. And then the same thing is happening when we get to here. So even though the image is smaller than that, um, it's still serving up the larger image. Now this is cool, but it's not always the case obviously here where my image is a little bit smaller. It's a good fallback though. So if you want to stop here, it's probably not the end of the world. But if you want to take this a step further, you can with the sizes attribute. This is where you go the extra step and actually tell the browser how big the image will be at various screen sizes by using media queries. Yep, yeah, media queries in your markup. And a little word of warning, it can get messy. Uh, but we're going to try and keep it simple for this example. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm going to change my layout a little bit here and we'll be back in one second. Okay, so um, I've gone and just created a little bit of a two column a grid here, uh, but if I shrink down to below 760 pixels, my images are stacking on top of each other, and if I go bigger than that, then we fall into a two column layout. So very simplified, but the type of thing you, on a very simple level that you might run into in the real world. Um, so what we can do with this now is here where we have all of this stuff, I can actually come on to here and I can add the, um, Oops, sizes equals, and so we have a sizes attribute. Now the sizes attribute um, is where I can put in my, min, uh, my media query, and you know, the media query here works exactly like it does in uh, the CSS, so I can do my min width, and whatever breakpoint you're actually using in your CSS is the same breakpoint you're going to want to use here. Um, the thing is that's different is there's no curly braces or anything like that. I do my min width 760 and then I want to tell it at this media query what are uh, what's going on. So at this media query my image is 50 viewport width. So it's not exactly that obviously it's a little bit smaller but I'm saying at this size so 760 and bigger my image is pretty much taking up half my screen 
And then the rest of the time, it's taking up 100%. And you could separate this with another um, min width here of say like 1280. Uh, and then maybe it's like 25 VW or whatever you need to have. Um, you can put multiple uh, multiple media queries in. The last one with no media query is in all other cases. So the default will be 100. And the reason I'm doing a default is 100 is the times when I'm at my smaller screen sizes. So here it's using my 1x, then it's jumping to 2 because I'm hitting, um, it's bigger, that my viewport's bigger than 500, so it's loading up the next one. Then when I get to here, it's going back down to my 1x. So at this size, it's loading back in my lowest res image and the one that has the least weight to it. And then now it'll work normally from there. And I can't even get it on this screen size uh, up to the 3x just because it's not taking up enough room. Uh, now, if you really want to get super, super uh, close, you can actually use Calc in here. And Calc's um, browser support's pretty much on par with uh, source set and sizes. So if you're using it in here, there shouldn't cause any issues. Uh, 50 viewport width minus 2M because I have my grid gap of 2M in the middle there. So now I can really be nailing it home. I think you don't really need to take it to this length if you don't want to. Um, there's times maybe you want to be a bit more specific and you can add in things like that to get the exact unit you need if you want to be that accurate. So just to reiterate what this is doing, when my viewport gets to a specific width, it's going, okay, at this width, my image is taking up half of that. So it's taking up 50 of the viewport and it's cutting it so it's going okay my image is actually only say 475 pixels so i can use the 1x version of it and then when i get to here it's going oh now i need to use the 2x because even though my viewport's really big i'm only taking up half of that viewport so it knows exactly how big my image is um, which can be really really handy i also just want to say that this isn't for when we're resizing our screen like i'm doing now i'm resizing the screen as i'm working just to show you the different places this is actually loading in but in reality, most people don't resize their screen as they're visiting a website. It's when the page loads on their screen, this is the image we're going to use. So it, it's very rare that they'd actually change the viewport uh, while they're visiting your site. When the page loads for that user, I'm choosing, oh, it's on a mobile phone with a 3x, so I'm going to use one of these. Uh, I'm probably going to end up with the 3x image. But oh, look, now I'm on a laptop. And on this laptop, it's falling into two columns, but the image is small, so I'm using the 1x version of it. And then another user somewhere else loads it up on their desktop computer. And on that one, it's two columns, but the image is much bigger, so then I can use maybe the 2x version instead. So it's not for... The reason for this isn't for people that are resizing their screen like I'm doing in this demo. I just want to make that clear in case it wasn't. And that's it. And how far you actually want to push this and use it, that's up to you. It's not something that is a must have, but uh, interestingly enough, it has been around for quite a while now. Um, and uh, WordPress actually defaults to using this. So there are CMSs where it's automatically doing this for you. And there's actually workflow ways that are uh, you can build into your workflow to somewhat automate the process, uh, not as much as a CMS might. But uh, we're going to be exploring those a little bit later on sometime in the future. Not sure exactly when, but it definitely will be a topic that I want to look at um, is automating it a little bit because it can be a little cumbersome, as you can see with the markup when you're writing it all yourself. Um, but it, it is an important thing to consider when you're doing your site, especially if it's something that has a lot of images in there because it's going to greatly impact the speed of your page. Um, if you have like 25 JPEGs, it can make a big difference on uh, your portfolio or whatever it is. It can really make a big difference on your page speed index. And that, as we know, can be a really important thing on conversion rates. Um, but I'm here saying this is important. I'd love to know what you think. Is Were you watching this going, this is cool, but oh, I can't do that. This is way too much work to actually go through and do myself. Uh, or do you see yourself trying to incorporate this and use it a little bit more often? Or maybe you're going to use it sometimes and not other times. And be curious to know what your input is. So go down to the comments below and please let me know what you think about this and uh, if you're already using it or if you think about uh, or if you think you're going to be using it or if it's just way too much and you're never never going to actually use it. I'd love to know what your opinion on it is. And also don't forget things don't just stop here. We're going to be looking at the picture element next week and the picture element takes this to another step. It takes advantage of the source set. We can still use it um, but we can push things even further and do some really cool things with that as well. So we're gonna be looking at that next week. 
And with all that said, I hope you did like this video. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up to let me know about it. Thank you just so much for watching the video all the way to the end here. A massive thank you to my patrons. There's a few new patrons this month and I just want to say thank you so much for uh, thinking what I'm doing here is important enough to support. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And of course, not just the new guys, everybody who's been supporting me this whole time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's yeah, it means a lot to me, uh, the support I'm getting from you guys. Um, and with that said, thank you so much once again. I think I've said it like three times now, but thanks again. And of course, don't forget until next time to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.